Jim, Bark Lord, asked an interesting question. He looked at science and he was wondering whether science might perhaps be a particular kind of philosophy. And as I was listening to him posing that question, I kind of felt a little bit uneasy about it, but I wasn't quite sure why or how. And I'm still not 100% sure, but I'm going to throw this out there as an idea anyway, just, in, just to see what people think about it. And I'm going to suggest that science itself is not a philosophy as such. Science is a methodology, a way of interacting with reality in order to find out more about how reality works, how things work in reality, what makes reality tick, the processes that take place in reality, analyzing them, measuring them, quantifying them, predicting them, and so on and so forth. That is the methodology of science. So in that sense, science itself isn't a philosophy. That doesn't of course mean that philosophy is not involved. And that is where I think the, the, the subtlety lies here, in the sense that science itself isn't a philosophy, but science as an endeavor, as a methodology, as a way of interrogating reality, interacting with reality, is inspired by philosophy. And I would imagine that the type of philosophy that underlies the methodology of science is the sort of me uh, philosophy that springs from a left brain type of focus on reality. And what I mean by that is that in the left brain, in the left hand side of the brain primarily, what happens is that concepts that have been construed from the immediacy of the experience that is processed by the right hand side of the brain are condensed into things such as concepts, ideas, models, representations and so on that can then be manipulated internally within the left hand side of the brain. The left hand side of the brain, if separated from the right hand side and when it ceases to communicate with the right hand side of the brain, turns into a, an entity that thinks that its internal models of reality actually are reality. And in a way, that is an attitude that can get you very far in science, where you start thinking, when you start thinking that the models of reality, in other words, the laws of physics that we invented, the laws of physics that we human beings created as descriptions of the regularities that we observe in reality, when we start thinking that those are in fact reality. That is the left hand model, the left hand understanding of the world. And the philosophy that I reckon does underlie science, the, the philosophy that has inspired the emergence of science and the success of this methodology is the philosophy that reality is something that can be grasped, that can be grasped by a human being, that can be understood, that can be manipulated as concepts, as ideas and so on and so forth, and that reality is subject to laws and regularities that reality, in the extreme case, is objective.
and as such can be looked at objectively from a sort of external perspective. One of the enduring myths within the scientific philosophy, the philosophy that underlies science, is that reality is objective and that we can therefore describe with unlimited precision what is happening in reality. Whereas, of course, in a more mature version of science, in a version of science that has reconciled itself to reality as it really is, as we are really experiencing it, that has kind of brought back the right hand side of the brain into the equation and starts cooperating with that again, realizes that what we are working with are models and that every model, every representation of reality, every law of physics, no matter how useless it does get in the end, it has its limitations and it can never represent something as bizarre as absolute truth, for example. That is an understanding that science had had to reach after starting out from a position of mistakenly believing that reality can be objectified and can be studied as an object. In other words, that we can make objective truth statements about reality. That is the philosophy that I think gave rise to science. The philosophy in itself may not be correct, is, in my opinion, not correct. That does not negate in any way, shape or form the success, the immense usefulness, practical appliance and even the enormous amount of insight that we have gained thanks to all the progress that has been achieved through science. That is where I'm at at the moment. That is the sort of rambling thought process that I'm engaged in with regard to this question at the moment. So I thought it was a really good question and I hope I haven't bored you too much.